I am in Townsville, Australia, the day after racing in the World Championships, and I competed in the standard distance slash Olympic distance duathlon uh, race, and I uh, hosted in Townsville. Behind me is um, an island off of Townsville called Magnetic Island, which has been spectacular. And I am sitting on what's called the Strand. It's just a boardwalk that goes a couple miles um, from south to north. And um, just beautiful parks and uh, a boardwalk and uh, palm trees. The weather's been fantastic. Um, similar to Florida in March. Uh, a little humid, but um, just spectacular. So this uh, video on race day... Um, Started out the morning feeling good. Uh, sleep wasn't that great, but I slept pretty good the day before. Um, so I knew that it was uh, normal. Uh, certainly uh, world championship uh, nerves, and uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. And, uh, so woke up, had a really good warm up. Legs felt ready. Uh, I felt like I was, uh, was going to have a good day. I knew my legs were there. I was so dialed in mentally, um, knew what I had to do um, from uh, you know, a race perspective, nutrition perspective, what I needed to do leading up to the race, during the race. Um, I had a lot of confidence coming in. Uh, different from nationals, uh, where uh, my body was failing and, uh, before the race and not having confidence. This race I had lot of confidence going in that I was just going to have a good day for me. Whatever that result was, you never know. Um, but I knew I was going to have a solid performance with where my body and my head was. So the first run, um, 10K. So the, this race is a 10K run, 24.8 mile or 40K bike, and then a final 5K run. The run um, consisted of four laps on this first run, and um, it was um, much hillier than what was described or seen on paper prior. Um, there was a couple climbs, and uh, one significant at the end of each lap uh, on a boardwalk, which was most spectacular view, but it was quite the hike up the hill, similar to what I do every Thursday doing hill repeats, so I knew that would uh, help me out tremendously. Um, so the first run, um, you know, went out and uh, I hit the pace um, that I was targeting. And, and I'd say actually made it slightly slower, but um, with the climbs, that that impacted pace. And so I was extremely happy with my first run. I, um, I, I worked but didn't gas myself to jeopardize the rest of the race. So um, I'd say there's a fine line there and a 10, a 10K before a bike and then a final 5K is, is brutal the rest of the race. And um, I felt like I came out of that first 10K feeling like um, I worked but I still had uh, legs to uh, help me through. That first run, I uh, I thought I was in 11th at, at that point, and um, it was after probably about the first mile where um, I, I start out usually pretty quick in the first quarter, half mile. Um, that's just a race strategy I have, and then I settle in. So by the time I settled in at about a mile, um, I was in that 10th or 11th spot. In, it, in reality, it was 10. So going into the bike, uh, hopping the bike, and just wanted to do my thing on the bike, and that's just um, steady drive, and knew the first couple miles would be, you know, try to find the legs. The first couple miles of the bike was through this where I'm at now, the Strand. Uh, beautiful, like downtown, but a lot of roundabouts, um, some speed bumps, not the, the short, deep ones, but um, longer ones, so they were okay, but a lot of roundabouts to go around. But it wasn't as, um, let's see, tricky as doing some of the recon rides. Actually, it felt pretty good going through downtown. And uh, probably through about mile 18, felt really strong on the bike. And then the final six was, was tough, knowing um, still had a 5K and it was getting warm. 
and we had just complete sun. Um, somewhere, but, um, actually, there's clouds in the sky behind me right now, but we had no clouds in the sky, and we were totally exposed. So I felt um, like my body was um, feeling it at mile 18 of the bike, and um, had a little fluttering in the hamstrings. So I knew, uh, hey. to uh, blow up and have a complete train wreck final run. So I was smart at that point. I took all the nutrition and at the right spots where I needed to as I planned. And that went to, I executed that and uh, came in off the bike. I felt, I felt okay. I didn't have my bike legs like I would have if I had another couple weeks. So, but it was strong. So I came off the bike, and in uh, reality, the results, it was the fifth best bike of the day. So I came off, you know, in 10th place off the first run. I had the fifth best bike. I'm not sure where that put me at that point. And in the race, you don't know. So, but I was guessing I was probably in like the eighth spot maybe at that point. Because so I passed a couple on the, on the bike that I spotted. <coughs> so I was guessing I was around the eight, nine spot at that point. And then going into the final run, uh, as soon as I got out of transition, uh, I didn't feel the fluttering in the hamstrings, which was a good sign, but the legs were baked. So I knew to, it had to be smart. It was now really warming up. We were baking on the final run. Uh, it, so the final run was two laps of, the, uh, of that course to make up the 5K. First lap I got through. Um, okay, I was taking a lot of water, not taking a lot of water, but I was taking water and drenching it over my head and taking sips while I could. I had one gel like right before I started the run, so I knew that would take me through the final way, so I didn't have to worry about nutrition the rest of the, the race. And then the, the final lap, man, it was hard. My pace was actually steady, which was a good thing. It was just, it was tough. It was really tough. Um, at about mile... I had a gentleman pass me um, in my age group, and I thought that put me probably in like the 10 or 11 spot, and um, just guessing, but that's where I thought it was. We were going up that final climb, and uh, on that boardwalk, and he had passed me and took like probably a 20 meter lead, and as we were going up the boardwalk, I reeled him in to within a step behind him at the top, and then from there, it was 0.3 miles to the finish line. So my plan was get on his heels, and then um, I'd wait till the blue carpet and then make a, a go for it. And as soon as I got up to the top of the boardwalk and we took a right turn, both my hamstrings uh, seized up. And I Frankenstein legged for a couple meters, and I was pounding on both hammies to get them going. And then we started going downhill. And... Um, Miraculously, I started to get into a run rhythm again. I, I was shocked, and I at that point, I told myself, there is no way I was going to blow up at this point. I didn't care what I had to do, but I was going to figure it out to get to the finish line, and nobody was going to pass me. I didn't know if I was going to catch the guy in front of me at this point, because now he had, he had surged ahead probably you know, 10, 15 meters, and I knew that was over at that point, because so I'm still trying to figure out, I was figuring out my hammies at that point, but I really thought, I am not going to let somebody pass me, or if somebody's behind me, just keep going. So I um, got going, and as we was going downhill, at least it was a different motion, you know, stride, and I, I got under control with um, the seizing, <laughs> but it was fluttering. I knew, like, it just took one wrong move. And it could, they could totally lock, like they've done many times on me in, in races, and it's just a gamble I take on uh, being on the edge. And that's what either sometimes it makes it a, a, an incredible day or a rough day. But I, I know the gamble I take, and that's the gamble I choose. I live with it, die with it, and um, so I was going to live with it on this day, or die with it. So that was at point three when I seized up, and then... Um, Got down, you know, probably the next point two, when I probably had, you know, point one. It was now getting on the blue carpet. It's, we had to go around a roundabout and make um, kind of a 90 degree turn to the blue carpet. And then, you know, that's like, I don't know, 
know, 75 meters, maybe 100 meters to the finish line. And so I got to the blue car bed and I started to seize up again, just going around the turn, just the any different motion and triggers, trigger the leg, you know, to, to spasm. So I started to spasm. And as that started to happen, a gentleman caught me to the right and I just glanced over and I just, he looked like he could be in my age group. Uh, close enough to where um, he passed me by a couple steps, and um, I just went into an all-out sprint. So I went from the seizing to I just started sprinting like hell, and uh, I passed him. And uh, I had a great stride going right through the finish line, and I got you know, 10 steps passed, and in typical fashion for me, I um, go over to a gate, I collapse on the ground, uh, seize up, <laughs> and then I had um, one of the officials and volunteers come over, and they just gave me, uh, they put ice packs down in the back of my uh, kit, and I gave me one to the front, and actually I just needed a minute or two just to get my bearings, and it, um, it's been worse, <laughs> but uh, I just kind of just uh, squatted there, or I was on my knees, just sitting there, just grasping what had happened. I knew I had a, had a good race. I didn't know where I, I knew I was somewhere around the 10 ish area. And gosh, if I could finish in the top 10, um, that was going to be incredible. And if that guy was in my age group, I at least sprinted in front of him. So that was the feel I had on the ground going through the finish line. Had an American flag, which um, our Team USA uh, gave me, you know, with 5.2 left. And so I got to carry, you know, flag through the finish, which was. Uh, just super cool uh, to represent, you know, U.S. And yeah, I got my bearings together and um, you know, walk through to the finish, uh, or you know, through the our little staging area where you can get some you know, drink. And our uh, bag drop was right next to that, so uh, I got my phone and uh, I quickly pulled up the results and it showed I finished it. And uh, I called. Um, Lauren and I just I had asked her probably ten times, can you validate what you see? <laughs> Did anything change? Anybody else rolled through? I don't know. And she kept saying it was ten. And um, very emotional. Um, just where where I was, uh, you know, three months back to this day on a big stage at the World Championships and uh, finished tenth in the world, and I was the first American my age group. Um, so, so proud uh, to just represent um, the USA, Florida, Tampa Bay Safety Harbor, Diamond Fitness, um, family, friends, everybody who, you know, who you are um, that uh, has supported me through um, this. It's just, um, I love this. I love the Hard days, the um, the days like at nationals, uh, where it's you know, probably the lowest you can get um, at the sport, and um, makes a day like yesterday <laughs> definitely that much sweeter. And um, yeah, just um, yeah, very happy. Um, great day, and. Um, Ready for some rest coming up, um, chill a little bit. And uh, gosh, I've enjoyed so much here in Townsville again, yeah, just the whole area. Um, so I've got to enjoy that around the race and just meet so many great people from Team USA and from around the world. Um, the Aussie people here have been fantastic. Um, that's it. Um, that's it from Townsville uh, World Championships. Can't ask for anything more to compete, be healthy, fortunate to have, you know, to have the ability to uh, race uh, at an event like this, and um, just very emotional. Um, love it. I absolutely love this. See you next time.